John 19, verse 28. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, saith, I thirst. Quoting Psalm 22, verse 15. Now there was set a vessel full of vinegar, and they filled a sponge with vinegar and put it upon hyssop and put it to his mouth. When Jesus, therefore, had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. John 19, 28 through 30 is demonstrating the alertness and consciousness of Jesus Christ to the very end, which proves that he did not die by suffocation or asphyxiation. Because before someone dies through suffocation, as someone would normally die upon the cross, they they will pass out, they will swoon into faintness and unsoundness of mind. They will not immediately and suddenly die in a moment's time. It will be a drifting off into unconsciousness and then they will eventually die after suffering several episodes of fainting and unconsciousness. That is not how Christ died. And John 19 brings out the evidence of exactly how he died biologically, anatomically, by showing us what happened to his heart and lungs and the fluid of both water and blood filling his heart and lungs, which is a well-documented process of, let's to put it simply, heart failure, of dying under the agony of a broken heart where literally the left ventricle of his heart was ballooning because the cells of the walls were melting and dissolving until it ruptures. And as it ruptures, the, the sac around the heart fills with blood and his lungs are being filled with water and the whole scene is being set, beloved brethren, where as he's suffering in this way biologically and anatomically, it means that his life is hardly hanging on. It's like when somebody suffers some mortal wound or some uh, mortal uh, car accident and the person is hardly alive and the EMTs are working on him and, or her and you hear them saying to that person, stay awake, stay awake, don't go to sleep. Stay with me. They say, what's his name? What's his name? They call out his name. Stay awake. Stay with us. Fight with us. You ever wonder why they do that? Because the, the will of the person has a profound effect upon his, the biological functions of his body in a shocking way. We're literally, if that person who is dying in the throes of destruction just drifts off, into death by choice and chooses not to stay awake or not to fight or not to try to live, he will die. They have, this is a documented fact in the medical profession. So that's why they're always calling out into the ears of these dying people. Don't go to sleep. Try to stay with us. Keep fighting. Because if the person has a will to live, there is some sort of a greater sense of liveliness and working in his biological functions. What I'm trying to represent in this simple and perhaps uh, unworthy illustration is that the will of the Son of God to live was bearing significance as he was hanging there on that cross. And his will to die bears significance as the very threads of his biological and atomical existence was melting away. And when he willed to die, only after he perceived that the wrath of God was finished, he gave up his spirit and then died under the wrath of God.
John 19, 28 through 30 doesn't just demonstrate the alertness and consciousness of the Son of God, but it demonstrates His will to live and His will to die in that the divine being of the Son of God was upholding the mortal body of Jesus of Nazareth hanging by a thread of mortal existence he was maintaining his strength until he perceived the full volume of the wrath of God being absorbed in his body it wasn't just that he said it was finished it was that is impressive it's that he was consciously awaiting the satisfaction of the full volume of eternal wrath. And when he perceived that his sufferings in body and soul for 15 to 18 hours had proportionately amounted to correct the balances of judgment in in merit redemption for all mankind until the holy heart of an angry God was coming to a place of rest until the eternal fire of divine wrath was about to be extinguished it was then mere seconds away as he's observing it in the heavenlies with seconds away he relinquished his life and his mortal body died but what does this mean? it means that there is only one thing stronger than the wrath of God and it is the love of God and there is only one person who could have emerged victoriously there is only one living being in existence in the universe who could brave and heroically conquer the wrath of God in the suffering that he would endure. And that's God the Son. That as shocking and as terrifying as all of these majestic displays of divine wrath are, that speak of this suffering. You must look into the eyes of the man of sorrows, beloved brethren, and understand that divine love was strong enough to swallow death and hell. Divine love was greater still than even the eternal wrath of God. That the love of God for you in Christ, manifest in the flesh, hanging there on the cross, was more unshakable and immovable than granite mountains that melted before the wrath of God. He could not be turned aside. He could not be turned aside, beloved brethren. When the Son of God braved the wrath of God, He heroically conquered it and emerged victorious. And so He announces His victory even before His death. He announces His victory before the world in these solemn words. John 19 verse 30 and he said it is finished what 
that strength of love would be required to make the Son of God heroically brave the wrath of God until it was finished. What eternal, incomprehensible, inexhaustible, unimaginable force of divine love could be greater than this wrath? 